What's up guys? Welcome back to Polygon Academy. My name is Tim and uh, today we're just going to be doing a little mini tutorial on how to use the free three pack of lighting presets for Unreal Engine 4 I just put out. In this pack, there's three basic lighting setups. One for a sunny afternoon, a moody nighttime ambience, or a golden hour sunset. So in this video, we're going to quickly go over how to use these presets, how to get them into your scene as quick as possible, and then touch on some basic light baking settings that will really help you get the most out of them. If you're new to the channel, or have just randomly come across this video on YouTube, I'll leave a link below where you can download the presets for free. If you do grab the presets and really enjoy using them, smash the thumbs up button on this video, subscribe, and also let me know what you use them to light in the comments below. Just as a quick disclaimer, both of the scenes I'm using for this video tutorial are actually made by Epic Games, and uh, you can download them for free off of the Unreal Marketplace. Uh, their content's really easy to work with and made a really great testing bed for creating these presets. And uh, because of all their textures and stuff are so nicely balanced, it makes it really, really easy to create uh, nice looking lighting. And uh, we'll touch on some of those details over the course of the tutorial. All right, so when you first open the zip here, uh, you'll see a folder called Polygon Academy Lighting Presets. Just open that up. Uh, in here is all the files that I've included. And the only three that you really need to worry about actually are these uh, three quick access notepad files. Um, basically, because of all the content is created from base Unreal Engine 4 content that's always included with the engine, uh, you don't really need any custom plugins or even any uh, local files for it. What these notepad files are, are basically a quick copy paste of all the actors I had in my scene um, with all their custom settings. So the skylight, the fog, uh, the sky dome and stuff like that. And uh, you can actually copy paste actors and objects and props and stuff like that from one Unreal scene to another, uh, if the content is actually in your project file. Um, but because all of it's based around basic Unreal Engine content that's built in already, uh, all of the content will be in your project file anyways. So here you can see I have one of the example uh, Paragon map files that Epic has put out for everyone to use uh, and check out and basically dissect. Um, if you open your uh, Unreal Launcher, if you go in the marketplace and search for the Paragon, Agora, and Monolith. You can just create a new project, add it to the project, and then open that map file. Uh, and it's basically here. This is kind of like the little setup that they have created for everyone to take a look at. Uh, I've deleted everything that pertains to the lighting. So I've removed the sky, I've uh, removed their, their lighting setup and stuff like that. Uh, if I go to the lit mode, basically all you see is these, uh, it looks really weird because it's just the reflection capture at the moment. Um, if I go to unlit, uh, you can see it like this. But so say we wanted to use the the daytime sunny uh, basic preset. Um, what I would do is I would go back to that zip. Um, I would grab the, the day 01. I can just uh, say on my desktop. You can drag these anywhere because they're not, you don't actually have to install them to Unreal. Um, so if I open up this notepad file, you can see it's basically, it looks like all this like uh, code or whatever. It's basically just all these settings for the, the basic actors in Unreal. Just grab it all, control A, control C. And then if I come over here and control V, paste it in, you'll see it pastes in all these uh, basic actors from the engine. So you have your atmospheric fog, the, the blueprint for the sky sphere, directional light, the exponential height fog, the uh, light mass importance volume that goes around the scene to tell it basically focus all of your, um, when it's building lighting, basically focus all your attention around these objects and in this area. Uh, so it's not calculating lighting off into infinity. Uh, a post-process volume and a skylight and it's all organized in a folder lighting day sunny uh, so now if I go into lit mode uh, you can see that the shadows look fairly black and that's because in this pack I'm using um, the skylight is actually static so it's not giving you a preview of the skylight's effect on the scene uh, and the skylight is set to capture all the sky so when we bake It'll actually fill in the shadows more and they'll probably have a bit more of a blue tint to them. And it'll really raise the overall level of those, uh, those shadows so they won't be as dark and as black. And it'll give you a nice bounce light that fills the scene. I have had an issue before where I've copy pasted these presets into an existing scene. And uh, sometimes it, for some reason it doesn't pull the uh, blueprint for the sky sphere. And to fix that, all you have to do is, uh, let's say it didn't bring in our, our uh, sky here. And it's just, you just, all you're seeing right now is the fog. Uh, if you go into your content browser, I'll bring it over here so you can all see. Uh, if you go into your content browser, all you have to do is find the engine content folder. If you can't find that, uh, down here in the view options, there's a tick box for it. Show engine content. So just make sure you turn that on. 
go to the engine content. If you open that up, there's engine sky and that's where the, the BP sky sphere is. Uh, what you have to do is just drag that out into your scene. And that kind of like reminds Unreal where to find the blueprint of the sky sphere. It seems, I think it's a bug. Uh, and then uh, literally just go back into your scene. And then what I would do is I would just delete that first off the sky sphere you just put into your scene and maybe go back and delete all this that we added already. Uh, just cause we're going to copy paste again, copy paste from the notepad file, paste it in. And then this time it should actually pull in a proper sky sphere. That's all linked up to the directional light and stuff like that. It's a weird bug, uh, but it's, that's the way that I found to fix it is just drag in a, a new sky sphere from the, the engine content, delete it, delete everything you just pasted in there and then just do a, a clean copy paste into your scene and it should all be fine. So let's go ahead and set up a bake with our daytime setting. Uh, so we're gonna grab the day 01 notepad, copy, paste it in there. Uh, so it should be all fine. It looks fine, basic blue sky with a warm sun and a little bit of clouds. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go into the, the world settings tab. And right now it's all set to default. Uh, these are the default light mass settings uh, for when you bake. Um, and a lot of people bake with these and don't get amazing results. So uh, that's uh, one of the frustrations I know I first had when I started doing lighting is uh, I would just hit the bake button. And even though if I was baking on high quality, medium quality, low quality production, it didn't matter. Uh, it wouldn't look that great. And uh, if you want to get really nice lighting, there's a few of these settings we can, we can change and it's going to give you a lot better results. Um, it will drastically increase your bake times though. So be careful with these and uh, adjust them as needed. All right, so the first setting here is the static lighting level scale. And uh, if you put this number higher to say two, your bake times will super like de uh, decrease, but the results won't be as nice. Uh, so this is great if you wanna quickly test out um, the look and see kind of get a look and feel of when you're doing bake lighting uh, with not super accurate results, but you're just doing quick little test bakes to see, oh, is the, the value of the shadows, are they right? Uh, is the color of the shadows, are they kind of like what I want? Uh, and that's great. So you could bump this up to something like two and you'll decrease your bake times. Um, it's great to do. Uh, when I go to bake my final scenes, I usually like to set this to like 0.1 uh, or 0.2. Um, so th that gives you a lot more accurate results when you bake your lighting. And, uh, but it drastically increases your bake time. So just be careful with that. Uh, it'll also, a lot of the time, um, help you fix a lot of like light map errors. I know a lot of people sometimes get those problems where if you have two modular walls together at the same time uh, and you bake lighting, there'll be a big light scene down the center. By decreasing this number to something like 0.1 or 0.2, uh, you get a lot more accurate lighting results and it can help resolve those issues. But like I said, it's the trade-off of uh, greatly increased bake times. Um, number of indirect light ba lighting bounces. Uh, so this is basically when the, the sun, say, hits the ground and th those photons will bounce off of the ground and uh, give you that nice GI look to things. Uh, so right now it's basically calculating, by default it calculates three bounces. So the sun comes, it hits and it bounces, 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 and then stops. Um, I usually pump this up to something like eight or 10. Uh, apparently anything after five, there's not that much of a cost, extra cost. So we want this to look pretty good. We want the sunlight to be bouncing around, filling the scene. So we're gonna leave it that at eight. Uh, the number of skylighting bounces. So this is the skylight. Uh, so Basically, this one is for any lights in your scene, like your directional point lights, spotlight, stuff like that. And this one pertains directly to your skylight. Uh, so that basically is the light that's simulating the dome of the atmosphere. Uh, it's pretty important. So we're gonna bump that up to like eight as well. Uh, indirect lighting quality. So this is the, the quality of your GI solution that you're getting put into the scene. Um, you can bump this up to something like two or three, or the higher you go, again, the longer your bake times. I usually leave it at like one or 1 1.5, or uh, maybe two if it's like my final, final render of my scene that I'm gonna do with camera fly through. But a lot of times with screenshot or YouTube compression, it doesn't really make a huge, huge difference. Uh, if you're doing really clean architectural renders and stuff like that, it probably would help. Uh, but for right now, we're just gonna bump this up to 1.5. And then the only other thing we're gonna turn on is use ambient inclusion. So it's gonna bake a lot of the, the AO into our light maps for our scene. And then finally, before we go to bake our lighting, uh, if we go up here to the build options for the lighting quality, 
Uh, you can see there's production, high, medium, and preview. Uh, a lot of times when I'm first roughing in my lighting, I like to just set it to preview and bake. It's uh, a lot faster. You don't have to sit there for you know uh, a long period of time waiting for your lighting to build to get a slightly more accurate result. Uh, it gives you a really you know basic indication of what the lighting will look like when you do do a final bake. And uh, you can use that to quickly iterate on your lighting uh, without sitting there just waiting and waiting forever. Um, for this case, I'm gonna bake it on high because I, I like all the settings I have set for it. And uh, so yeah, then I would just go ahead and smash the build button. But because I don't want you to have to sit here waiting for it to bake for, uh, for ages, I already have a baked version of this. After letting it sit there and bake and calculate all that lighting, uh, you can see that our, our shadows are no longer super, super dark and there's not a lot of really high contrast to the scene. Uh, now that the skylight's gone and done its job and really filled in the scene with a lot of nice GI, uh, same for the sun, that sun is also uh, calculated into the GI solution. So you got a lot of this nice warmth bouncing around, filling in your shadows, and uh, giving everything a lot more of a realistic look. So here you can see, I've actually applied the same daytime lighting setting to the uh, FX Zen scene that you can get free from the marketplace uh, in the example content. Um, and it's just a great architectural scene with a lot of concrete that provides a lot of opportunity for some really nice bounce light. Uh, so here you can see underneath the bridge, uh, the, the sun's you know hitting this wall and this floor and bouncing up and, and really illuminating there. Same for under this this overhang here, and it, it just it's a great way to show off uh, GI and uh, the the daytime lighting setup that I've created. So for this one, same thing. I just copy pasted them in. The only thing I changed on it for the directional light, I go into the details. Uh, I increased the indirect lighting intensity because I wanted even more GI from this light. So if you start to increase this number, uh, I think by default on the preset, I have it set to around 1.5, 1.6, something like that. Uh, I bumped it up a little bit just because I wanted a little bit more of that bounce sunlight in my, uh, in my shadows here. Um, and if you crank it up even more, it can start to look a little washed out and a little crazy, but play around with this number. Um, it's a great way to quickly just add some extra bounce light into your shadows and really help alleviate some of the darker areas in your scene. And finally, here you can see I've used the sunset preset to give this exact same scene a totally different feeling to it uh, in terms of the, the lighting. It's like a, kind of like that golden hour, you know, around 5, 6 p.m. Uh, in summer where the sun's going down and everything just looks super gorgeous. Uh, and it's just another example of one of the presets that I've used. So if we go back into the zip file, you can see I've included a folder of the lighting presets. And this is just three basic Unreal maps with uh, only the, the lighting uh, information in them. Um, if you can add these to any of your projects if you want, uh, if you don't feel like using the notepad files. Um, you, all you have to do is take this folder, extract it to your content folder of your Unreal project. So say I wanted to add this to my Japanese uh, Art Station Challenge scene. I would literally just go into my, uh, where is it? It's usually in your Documents folder. Documents, Unreal projects, uh, my Art Station Feudal Challenge, and in this folder here, Content. I would just actually, I already have it pasted in there. Um, so you would just extract that folder right, uh, right into, your, into the root of your content folder. And then when you open up those map files, uh, so you can go here, open level. Um, yeah, you'll just have a folder called lighting presets and uh, say open up the daytime one. You can see it's just this exact same stuff uh, and you can actually just grab it all from here. Same as the notepad files, control copy and then go over to any of your other scenes. So say I wanted to change this to the daytime, just delete all the old lighting. Same thing, paste it in, and then just rebake and it'll update all the GI. So right now it's, it still has the, the light maps from the sunset bake, uh, and those will all be updated to reflect the look of the daytime settings when you rebake. Uh, so if something's not looking quite right, uh, make sure you rebake after changing some settings and that'll probably fix all of your problems. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the lighting presets. Uh, if you find them handy, let me know in the comments below. I'm always interested in your feedback. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.